The economy continues to grow at a solid pace, but the inflation and labor market data show an evolving situation. The upside risks to inflation have diminished, and the downside risks to employment have increased. As we highlighted in our last FOMC statement, we are attentive to the risks to both sides of our dual mandate. The time has come for policy to adjust. The direction of travel is clear, and the timing and pace of rate cuts will depend on incoming data, the evolving outlook, and the balance of risks. We will do everything we can to support a strong labor market as we make further progress toward price stability. With an appropriate dialing back of policy restraint, there is good reason to think that the economy will get back to 2% inflation while maintaining a strong labor market. The current level of our policy rate gives us ample room to respond to any risks we may face, including the risk of unwelcome further weakening in labor market conditions. Pandemic-related distortions to supply and demand, as well as severe shocks to energy and commodity markets, were important drivers of high inflation, and their reversal has been a key part of the story of its decline. Finally, finally, finally! Oof. Everybody in the real estate community is dancing, they're singing, they're praising. Hallelujah! Because you know why? Finally, the magic words that we've all been wanting to hear. It was a little something like this. The time has come for policy to adjust. This is your captain speaking, Jerome Powell. Please get ready for landing. Tray tables up, seatbelts locked and loaded. And folks, we're coming in for a landing. We are going to cut rates. We are pivoting. Finally, finally, finally. We can't have a dance party yet because we haven't officially got the rate cut. But that is the best news, the best sentence, the best line we've heard in a long, long time. So us in the real estate community that have been out here getting our yeah, butts kicked, commercial real estate, absolutely depression. Those are music. Those words are music to our ears. We're very, very excited. So for you that bought in the last three years that have been dealing with these high interest rates, soon your time will come where you can refinance as well. For you those sitting on the sideline waiting for rates to come down to buy, and that's what you have to do because affordability, your time is going to come as well. For those of you that have been affected by the real estate and the real estate business because business is slow, not enough deals going on, whatever it may be, your time is going to come as well. For those of you that have stuck through growing your business, doing up, showing up every day, making an effort, helping clients, doing all that, your time to double or triple your business will be coming soon. But overall, folks, this is huge. This is huge to the global economy, the US economy, the consumer, the homeowner. And for those of you in commercial, God bless you because you guys have been getting your ass handed to you. I know the time is coming where people are going to have to re, you're going to have trillions and trillions of dollars to refi. Trillions and trillions of dollars of transactions. So you guys will make a ton of money. And you guys, for all the money you've lost in the last couple of years, have been sacrificing eating ramen and soup or beans and rice, whatever you call it, high school. The time will come when you will be able to obviously have a better time in this business. Because oh, folks, it's been rough. It's been very, very tough. But speaking of rough and tough, we have to stop and we have to take a moment because look, here is the deal. The reason why they are cutting rates is not always a good thing because you're cutting interest rates. That means that the economy is slowing. That means they're hitting their target of a 2% inflation suit. That means the consumer is slowing, um, employment is slowing and things like that. And they're starting to cut rates because they don't want things to get dramatically worse or worse. Half the people out there say we're going to have a recession. The other half say we're just not going to have a recession. And you know what? Oh, let me tell you. Nobody knows a damn thing because everybody's been wrong to this point. Everybody has been wrong, including moi, because I thought we'd have a recession. I thought rates would be lower. And the reason why we're wrong is because the government, yes, the government, I don't care if you're a Democrat, you're a Republican, you're in the middle, you're in the side, you're up here, you're down there. You guys are the problem and now you guys are in the way because you guys decided to print money, spend money that we don't have, and you continually do it. And this is why inflation is out of control. And we're not realizing it's not that companies are gouging and price gouging and all this crap. It's because we printed so much friggin' money, we gave so much money out, it was unnecessary, we should stop. Like I said, I'm not blaming nobody. I'm not blaming Trump, I'm not blaming Biden, 
I'm not blaming Kama. I'm not blaming JFK. I'm not blaming Jerome Powell. I'm just saying they did what they had to do. But now we look back and we go, shit, we overdid it. We overspent. We overgive. We kept rates too low. We locked people down too long. And that is the absolute truth. That trumps political. That trumps everything. You can be any party you want, and you cannot disagree with that statement that we didn't lock down too long. We didn't spend money. We didn't give away money too much. We didn't let people not pay their bills and pay their rents for too long in their mortgages. We did not let them. It was crazy. What we did is crazy. And at the time, it seemed like we had to do it. But now you look back and go, oh my gosh, why did we do that? Because guess what? If you're hurting, if you're suffering now, if you can't pay your bills or you bought a house and you're getting choked by your higher interest rate or you can't buy a house, or if you're in the commercial real estate business, you're getting your ass kicked, or even our industry, you're getting your ass kicked, or your small business is hurting, your restaurant's hurting, whatever it is, this is because the government mismanaged a lot of things. That is the utter truth, folks. That is why we are here. And so I will leave you with this before we move on with more exciting news this week, is that are we late on the rate cut? Is the feds, the government screwing up again? Are we still spending too much money? Well, guess what? The answer is probably yes. But the good news is, because it might not be good news, is that in a year or two, we'll look back at the same stuff we're talking about right now and we'll realize Powell hit it perfect, Powell was late, Powell was early, or we spent too much money, what the hell are we doing? We will realize, because I don't care who gets in office, it's a common denominator of spend, 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 bail out, bail out, bail out. And that's what we keep doing. Kick the can down the road. And eventually the can can't be kicked and you have to deal with it. But for now, you kick the can down the road. So with that being said, it's time to get into why you're here. Not to hear me rant and complain. Because honestly, I'm not complaining. Because business for me has been great. I've been helping clients because I've been doing this 20 plus years. But you got to know where the head puck's headed, not where it's going, right? So you want to be in front of it, I am. So I'm here to help clients. I'm here to bring new products and knowledge and educate. That's what I do on this platform. So with that being said, my name is Kenny Simpson. And if I haven't met you, nice to meet you. I've been in the real estate business for about 20 years. I funded billions of dollars of loans. I've helped over 5,000 clients purchase, refinance. And hey, if I can help you, reach out to me. But you know what I do? I spend a lot of my time on creating content and educating people because I want to educate people on when they hear all this mumbo jumbo crap out there about what does this mean about rates? And then is it a good time to refi or buy? And I don't understand all this. I try to break it down and dumb it down for you. So what's going on there in the global and US economy? How does it affect rates? How does it affect housing? How does it affect what's your plan if you're going to buy an investment property? And that's what I do here. I just like to educate and create content for you that hopefully I can help you. And by that doing that, I'm able to meet a lot of people, help a lot of people, and solve a lot of problems. But anyways, so if I can help you, reach out to me, text me, DM me, email me. My information's in the show notes. And obviously, guys, if you find this valuable or interesting, subscribe, like, give me a comment. Also, share this with somebody. A lot of people share my stuff and it helps other people because that's why I'm here creating content. And I do so many scenarios and so many conversations that I'm able to help you and talk to how many people and you live in the world of real estate and mortgages, you're good. It's like, you know, when you go get your car fixed and drive up in the mechanics, like, 65 years old. He's like, I've been fixing cars for 50 years and he's trustworthy and good and knowledgeable. You used to ask him questions. He knows everything. Yeah. Well, I'm not 65 years old, but I've been doing a lot of loans, helping a lot of people. So I want to help you. And that's why we create this content. Speaking of content, speaking of creating it, let's go into it's time to check out inventory. Inventory is barely growing week over week. We're at 698, 473. Folks, we are way up from the pandemic low of 224,000 and we're up Last year from the 400,000, now we're in the sum of 700,000. So it's barely growing. We are reaching our peak. We're going to start decelerating because that's the time of the year. Remember, there's winter, spring, summer, fall. And what happens? Winter, spring, summer, fall, winter. So winter, spring, summer, fall, winter. Do you get it? So we are turning a corner going, we're going to be going from summer boohoo. So what's going on in San Diego? We got um, new listings at 543, listings sold 408, active listings 4818. Still not good, still low because we have 3 million people here, but we are growing. Deals are sitting on the market. It's a good time 
if you're able to buy, negotiate, and get some deals now because it feels a little slower. People are nervous about the election. Rates are around the corner. So if rates drop another point, I can tell you right now, people will be jumping off the sidelines, buying homes, refinancing. The wheels will be turning. Payments will make go down even more. So somebody lock, you know, and it's going to be a better time to refi, which we talked about on this channel many times. But what everybody wants to know, what is going on with rates, the 10-year treasury? Look, why don't I just look at it where we're talking? As I talk about the 10-year treasury, it is sitting at 3.829. So rates are kind of flat week over week. We still need some data for them to go lower. They also go lower because the spreads could start going lower too. And remember, we talk about that every week. So if you don't know what that is, weekly and economic data. So here we go. I'm going to go through it quickly. What do we got? What's hot? What's on the back? We got consumer confidence. Uh, that's big. We've got um, Fed chatting. Some Fed men, are all, the Fed officials are always chatting, talking, interviews, blah, blah, blah. GDP revised, retail and wholesale inventories. Pending home sales, PC Friday. That is what our good old Jerome Powell and the feds look at. So if that's coming in lower, it'll still be locking, even though he's locked to cut rate September, as long as the PC and the data keeps showing it's in line to where they want to be. Personal income and spending and consumer sentiment. So, you know, there's some data this week. And uh, kind of it, the data that keeps coming out is a test of where things are at and what's going on. Well, one of the big stories, one of the things that went viral, one of the things I think that put the dagger in Jerome Powell's back. Oh, time to cut. And guys, I've been saying this on the channel. My content, you will know that I think the jobs reports are a bunch of baloney. Weakness in the jobs report. Yes, as I shoot this video, we're starting to see the job market slowly but surely soften. The jobs market is bullshit. The jobs market is bullshit. I kept seeing, I kept saying this week over week, month over month, the jobs market's bullshit. The numbers are bullshit. Why do we put out numbers that we know a month later could be wrong? Why 11 out of 12 trends last year were wrong? And that's what I kept telling everybody is it's wrong. And according to the viral news, we were $820,000 jobs, sorry, 1,000 jobs wrong in the last year. That number says it could be up to 1.2 million. Do you understand how frustrating this is? Do you understand it's 2024? Why don't we just wait until we get the right data and release that? because this affects the stock market, it affects interest rate. When you go buy a home and you get a bullshit jobs report and it bumps your rate a quarter, why not a quarter in rate? That never had to happen. We should be able to sue the government over this, whoever does these stupid jobs reports. So as I will tell you, be careful who you trust, be careful who you watch. Remember these jobs reports, a lot of this data is total baloney sandwich, shit from bull, cockamania crap, and so we don't need to get into it, but it really is. So the job market is not as strong as it is. Um, the consumer is not as strong as they are. Delinquencies on credit cards and car payments are going up. I just talked to a lender earlier today. They said that the delinquency rates for their portfolio that they have, and they did a bunch of short-term rental DSCR loans, the delinquency rate is going high, up higher on those DSCR um, short-term rental properties. Because why? Because the consumer isn't going to Joshua Tree as much as they did or to here or there or wherever. It's all these people that bought, they can't afford the payments. They're bleeding. They're trying to hold on. And so, and on top of that, in a place like Joshua Tree, I'm picking on you, Joshua Tree in California, their place they think is worth a million is now worth $800,000 because all these people went in there. Before COVID, I think there was 1,900 vacation rentals after COVID. I think I heard a year or two ago, there's over 5,000. Yeah, not good. No, not good at all. No, 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 not good. So the consumer's slowing, labor's showing, inflation's slowing. We're just, it's slowing. And so how do you trust the data? How do you trust the government? How do you trust the feds? Like I said, I don't care who's in, watch the data, quit listening to people talk. So how low do mortgage rates need to go to get homeowners off the sideline, maybe to sell their house, maybe to buy up, maybe to refinance? You know, that is the trillion dollar question. So in this article from Housing Wire, it talks about, you know, currently rates around six and a half percent and where to really need to be. But basically what I hear out there on the streets and all these articles talk about is, oh, five, if like, rates go back to five, I don't know if it's like this psychological thing, whatever, we will start seeing people pivot, um, start to make more sense start to come off the you know, sidelines, buy and things like that. So, because when you're looking, so 5% is going to be the magical number for people to refinance, buy, 
and maybe start trading up. So to really get people off the sidelines, I think with the twos and three percent, you're going to need to see rates go on the fours. Could that happen? Absolutely. I think if you see stuff in the fours and fives, it will be an ultimate game changer for affordability, for people who are willing to sell the house, refi, debt consolidation. But I think you're going to see a lot of cash out, debt consolidation, rates come down. People that are sitting on these HELOCs um, that are higher. We're going to sit on credit cards and debt like that. They're going to have all this equity. They're going to come in, re recalibrate all that debt. And look, yeah, they got this low rate, but if they can consolidate all this stuff, it's going to make much, much sense and put them in a much better position. And to wrap up this week, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on there because now we're moving into this, as I said, the Olympics are over. Now we're moving into, we've got, you know, September, October, November. We pretty much have like three months, September, October, November. We have actually like two months before elections here. We got some debates coming. So you're going to see a lot of these uh, candidates focusing on housing, focusing on consumer, you know, jobs, and things like that. And here on this channel, we really want, we care about what are they going to do for housing? What are they not going to do for housing? Your rate's going to go low. And here's what I think. I think you're going to see a lot of different proposals of, oh, we're going to build more housing. We're going to do this. We're going to give incentives to the borrowers and all that. That sounds great. That's awesome. But I don't think a lot of it's going to happen. And here's why. Because it just never, ever happens. So what's most importantly, what they really need to focus on is getting interest rates down, making it more affordable. Because think about it, guys. People have a first, they have a second, the debt's killing them. They just need, we need rates to be four or five to make this make sense. And housing has gone up so much, a lot of people just cannot afford it. So the way to get them to afford it is bringing rates down where it's more attractive, more affordable, because guys, when it comes down to it, like when you're buying a car, most consumers, they only care about their payment. And so with rates, you'll see rates probably in FHAV because those are typically lower than conventional FHAVA rates. When we, if we got rates on the fives, those will probably hit in the fours and then conventional rates and jumbo rates, things like that would eventually land in the fives, which will dramatically save so much money. I was just talking to a borrower today. I think we ran the math between, you know, where their rate is and where their rate could be. There was talking over a thousand dollars a month in savings. One client last week, because the jumbo was a jumbo loan amount, we're talking at $2,500 in savings. So the savings is going to be real. So. With the politicians, with what's going on, it's going to be very hard to go and build all these units and do all these things and do this massive rent control because honestly, that's not really, that's not what it is. And just giving money to people to force them to go buy homes and tell oh, I'm helping you out. Here's $25,000 and this and that. Number one, they have to be able to afford the home. Number two, they have to be able to qualify the home. And number three, are they even ready to buy a home? Are they educated? Does it make sense? Is it the right time? And these are the things I think these politicians and um, future presidents or people that are going to be a part of their um, their administration, that's what they really need to focus on. But we don't want to overregulate banks because they won't lend. We don't want to um, scare banks because they won't lend. And also, we don't want to scare Wall Street or people that buy secondary mortgages and non QM markets like that. We want things to be liquid, fluid, and a robust market so it's lendable, not only to commercial, not only to residential, but businesses. Because if you can't get a loan to commercial, residential, or business, you're just going to affect the economy. At the end of the day, credit cards are high. And also people can do a cash out refi exalted. People, the good news is people are sitting on crazy amounts of equity. And so I also think if you want to get more inventory, you want to incentivize people to sell, well, maybe you give them higher incentives instead of $500,000 for tax, for um, tax exemptions, for the capital gains, maybe place like California, Florida, New York, things like that, you should bump it up. Maybe a million, maybe two million. I know you might think, Kenny, that's crazy, but it's not crazy because people are sitting at homes in these communities, coastal communities, they just won't sell. The family's like, we're not going to sell the home and we're going to make $3 million and then we're going to have to pay 50% into the taxes. So they don't. They'll sit on a home, they'll literally leave it, let it, leave it there, free and clear, do nothing, Nobody rents it and it sits there or they rent it out and that's not good too. So we need people to sell homes. We need people to you know buy homes, remodel them. We need people to buy starter homes, um, trade up homes. We need this thing to get moving. And the way to move it is you got to get rates down because you got to get affordability down because people care about payment. At the end of the day, they forget about the rate. They just know, oh, my payment is 2,500 or 3,500. And that makes sense. Just like your car when you buy. It. Oh, what's the payment? A thousand? No, I wanted a $700 payment. Stick to 700, not a thousand, right? And that's what we're saying. And can a president truly come in and save the day and not cause a recession and add more jobs and all this? I don't really think so. Their policies can definitely help the business community or scale the business community. So, you know, one one candidate might be, hey, they get elected, let's go 
we're business people, we're gung-ho, let's step on the gas, let's go. Another one's like, oh my gosh, we're going to be more fearful. We're going to pull back. So they could be inheriting a recession. They could be inheriting a bad market, a bad economy, a bad stock market. Housing could correct. We just don't know. You get a bunch of people like go on their jobs. They're going to like to go get cash or selling your homes. People have to start selling it for cheaper because they got to move it quicker. And that turns the real estate market. But we want, we want interest rates to come down. We want no over-regulating on banks. We need affordability to go up. And last but not least, we would love more inventory. But it's really, really hard when 95% of people are stuck at 5% or less, 75 at 4% or less, 3% at 3 And you know, that's not really helpful for getting housing to move. And also our grandma and grandparents are living longer. And 40% of all the homes in America are free and clear. So there's a lot of data, a lot of interesting information that's out there. 